So here's a question for everyone. When you think of items you use that have years of research and development involved, what do you think of? Is it your shiny latest generation cell phone? If I combine that with cutting edge biotechnology, now what do you think of? Is it that DNA sequencing kit you sent in the other day? But tell me, have you ever thought of this? <laughs> I know it's probably an item you actually don't like to think about on the regular.、Um, or how about this? Stay with me now. I swear this isn't a talk on your least favorite chores. Or how about any of these other items? These are just everyday items you have lying around your home. But what if I told you there's a lot of really cool scientific innovation happening behind these unassuming exteriors? And the more we know about it, the better decisions we can make as consumers. You know, when I tell people I work in science, sometimes people's first thought goes to stem cells or cancer research or something. But science is an integral part of our everyday lives. And I think we're only at the tip of the iceberg in terms of harnessing all of the knowledge we have to create a better world. One great example of this is enzymes. We've taken enzymes from nature and put them to work in other ways, in products that we use every day without a second thought. It's an effective and sustainable biotechnology that can be applied in so many different ways. To prove that, I'd like to take everyone here on a stroll through their homes and show you some examples of how we do just that. So before we do that, it's probably best if I explain a little more on enzymes. I was chatting with some friends recently about this, and I asked them, "What do you think an enzyme is?" And then immediately after, "Well, wait, wait, don't Google it. That defeats the point." <laughs> One of my friends who had already half pulled out his phone, I could see the traumatizing memories of ninth-grade biology flash across his face. Here are some of their responses: "Is it a protein? That's the first science word I could think of, and it does stuff." <laughs> Or Um, I guess it's a molecule that attaches to something and does something, maybe. And my personal favorite that came with a look of utter defeat. I have no freaking clue. <laughs> well, my friends aren't wrong. An enzyme, in fact, does do stuff. But more specifically, they're biocatalysts, and they can generate all sorts of transformative reactions that otherwise would not be possible. So, where do we find enzymes in the home? In the kitchen, for starters. Let's go back to that first item I showed—the enigmatic dishwasher. What do people know about the dishwasher and the detergent that goes in it? Besides the fact that your significant other always loads it the wrong way. <laughs> Why don't I take you inside? Your dishwashers use a small volume of hot water that's recirculated continuously using these rotating pumps. The combination of the thermal energy from the hot water and the mechanical energy from the power spraying are two key elements to getting your dishes clean. But the third is the chemical component, and that comes with the combination of the water and your dishwashing detergent. Now, these detergents, whether you use a tablet, powder, or gel, are a carefully formulated mix of ingredients like builders, bleaches, and enzymes. Each one of these has been methodically designed by scientists and engineers to create the perfect environment for your dishes to come out sparkling clean. Enzymes here play a critical role in breaking down stuck-on foods. In fact, on certain cooked-on foods, it can be near impossible without them. So, where did we even get the idea to put enzymes in the dishwasher? Well, if you think about what your dishwasher's purpose is, why not be inspired by what usually absorbs all that food? Your own digestive system. The instant food enters your mouth, enzymes in your saliva help start breaking it down. Then, throughout the whole digestive process, they're produced by your body and put to work turning food. Into fuel, these types of enzymes break down the bonds in proteins, starches, and fats into smaller molecules. So, doesn't it seem natural to leverage enzymes in the dishwasher? This goes even one step further. The enzymes in your dish detergent or any other everyday item are often researched and selected to be at its best in the environment that's needed. It's one of the reasons why your saliva enzymes wouldn't work perfectly in the dishwasher. Your body temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius, while your dishwasher runs higher than 50. So, in this case, we search for enzymes in nature that are more thermostable than the ones in our bodies. So, please don't go home and start spitting in your dishwashers, <laughs> telling your family, "Don't worry, guys, got this. Learned about it in a TED talk." Another element we search for, as you can see, are the enzymes that will、uh, best catalyze the reactions we need. So, in the dishwasher's case, the ones that will best break down the foods we find most troublesome to clean. A way to think about this is to imagine an enzyme as a Pac-Man. Each enzyme is unique in what it will work on best. 
Think of it as the shape of the Pac-Man's mouth. Now, it's great if I have an enzyme that digests chocolate ice cream, but that's not really what I have trouble with on my dishes. But what about a wonderful, crusty, baked macaroni and cheese? It's a lot tougher, huh? So we'll search for enzymes that will best fit these difficult stains. Sometimes we can't always find the perfect fit, so we'll engineer slight changes to make them more effective. We haven't mastered all these tough food stains yet, but we're getting better. And the better we get designing these specialized enzymes, the more we can reduce the other players in the game, whether that's certain ingredients that are less eco-friendly, or the mechanical and thermal energies that are needed. Wouldn't you like it if your dishes were clean in five minutes in tepid water? Now let's look around the rest of your kitchen. Maybe on your counter you have some fresh baguettes from the local bakery. It's amazing when you slice into that crust. The sound of that perfect crunch combined with the softness inside. I love carbs. <laughs> The only thing that can ruin this is when I come back to my half-sliced baguette the next day and find the thing hard as a rock. Or maybe you've gone even one step further, like when I've already poured out a bowl of my favorite cereal, and that first bite tastes like cardboard box. Well, these are things you've probably experienced before. About a third of the food we produce globally is actually lost or wasted due to spoilage, staling, and other supply and consumption issues. But what if we could slow staling or other ways of food spoilage? Let's add enzymes to the equation again. So to do this, we have to understand a little baking science, which is great because now I get to host my own segment of the Great British Bake Off here.、Um, one of the mechanisms of staling involves the retrogradation of starch. So think of the starch molecules in your bread as these Hoberman sphere toys you might have played with as a kid. As you bake it, these molecules, known as amylose and amylopectin, react with water and heat, and they swell and gelatinize. Think of it as the starch structures expanding, creating that soft, fluffy texture in your bread or rice. Over time, though, the starch will recrystallize, forming a more compact and ordered structure like it used to have. This causes a hardening of our food texture, such as the staling of my baguette, or like when you have day-old rice in the fridge. But what if we could devise a type of amylase enzyme that would selectively clip certain parts of the starch so that it doesn't easily recompact? That's what certain baking enzymes can do: slowing the retrogradation of starches by changing the molecule structure, effectively extending the shelf life of baked goods so that we, as consumers, can waste less of it. How about we head to the bathroom now? Anyone familiar with、uh, Beano? Oh, a popular item, I see. Okay. Or how about lactaid? The primary ingredient in these products are. You guessed it: enzymes that help you better digest certain foods. So now you know enzymes can also play a key role in, let's say, odor removal and、uh, general quality of life for you and everyone around you. <laughs> But let's not linger on that. Our last stop on this brief tour of your home is your closet. Enzymes play a significant role in the processing of textiles before they make it into your favorite clothing. They've replaced a lot of traditional finishing technologies that require significant heat, water, and harsh chemicals, making it so that fabrics like cotton can be woven and knit properly, and so that clothes can feel clean and soft when we purchase them. So, speaking of clean, as your clothes go from your closet to your laundry machine, or in my case, from my closet to draped-over furniture to the floor to eventually my laundry machine, here's another appliance where enzymes come into play. There's a natural connection there. Enzymes that can help remove soils off of your dishes can do the same for your clothes, but it doesn't stop there. As I've grown older, in theory, more mature, my laundry needs have changed. You know, way back when in college, I was more concerned about washing everything I owned at once so I could avoid finding quarters, while still being able to get out all of my coffee and flaming hot Cheeto stains. But now, as an adult who's more coordinated and careful, I want my clothes to look nicer. And it's certainly a huge annoyance when I've worn my sweet new sweater a couple times, only to find a giant cluster of pills forming in my armpit. So pilling on your clothing occurs because of abrasion of the fabric, just from normal wear and tear. Damaged loose fibers on the fabric surface will collide and entangle, like your headphones when you've put them in your pockets for five seconds, and they'll form fuzz and eventually balls or pills. There's not a lot you can do about this. You can、uh, buy one of those fabric shavers off those infomercials, or you can just resign yourself to wearing those yoga pants that look a decade old. Or you can use enzymes that operate like fabric shavers, but on a micro scale. 
Certain detergents are doing just that. They've added enzymes like cellulases that have been designed to clip off those pills while you wash. So really, the enzymes in your laundry detergent can be multifunctional. With some that are there for fabric care benefits, keeping your clothes looking newer longer, while others are there ensuring they stay clean and fresh, removing tough stains like Cheeto powder. Now you might be wondering why I'm talking about all this. Why am I spending time up here explaining the dirty secrets of your dishwasher or the hard facts about your bread staling? Well, hopefully, when you all go home tonight, you see items like these in a slightly different light. Maybe now with a tiny glimmer of affection or appreciation. Everywhere in your homes, items you use every day have had a host of engineers and scientists like me working on improving them. Just one part of this everyday science is using enzymes to make things more effective, convenient, and environmentally sustainable. Maybe one day we'll be so good at this, you'll need just a tiny bit of cold water to get all your dishes clean. Or maybe we'll prevent staling entirely and create the everlasting baguette. Preventing tons of global food waste and avoiding that shameful eating of my stale bowl of Lucky Charms. There's more science than you realize hiding in your homes, and I think the better we all understand that, the better choices we can make. Thank you.